This is Keith with Honey Bee Honey and I'm coming at you with a little bit of a different video than my normal beekeeping videos today. Um, the main focus is how to degranulate or uh, re, re uh, liquefy your honey, decrystallize your honey, however you want to say it. I have a few different jars here today. This uh, mason jar has liquefied, mostly liquefied honey at the top and then solid granulated honey at the bottom. Uh, the reason is, is because when I'm done with my bulk containers, I I, I uh, empty them into a mason jar because it has a wide mouth lid. And uh, as I get enough honey, I reliquify it and then I can transfer it to a container that I sell honey in. This is honey that has been partially crystallized. This and these two jars are both honey that have been uh, reliquified. So, in a moment, I'll show you. You know how you can see. I'll, I'll, I'll put a backlight on there and show you the difference between the uh, different different honeys, just so you can see. And then I'm going to give you a few different methods to uh, reliquify your honey. The first things first, though, I want to talk to you about honey. All natural honey granulates at some point. There are a couple varieties that, uh, such as Tupelo, that I've heard, that take a very long time to granulate but eventually it will all granulate. Uh, it's, a, it's a natural property of honey. If it doesn't granulate, it's not real honey. Uh, imported honey from, say, China uh, is often cut with corn syrup. Uh, that is, half of its honey, or let's say 30% of its honey and 70% of its corn syrup, or it could be a 60-40 or whatever. And then uh, basically what that does is extend the amount of honey that they're able to sell. So it's not 100% pure honey. There's a few videos online that I saw that you can do tests to see if it's pure honey or not. And uh, those seem to be good enough videos. I don't think I need to add to that. But there are a few other things going around, things I read in bee magazines and uh, on, see on YouTube that are totally wrong. Uh, natural honey always crystallizes. Uh, there's a rumor out there that honey only crystallizes if a beekeeper uses sugar and feeds his bees sugar. We never put sugar syrup on. What sugar syrup is used in uh, beekeeping is to, to uh, it's a stopgap measure to keep a hive from dying. So if a hive is very weak, in which case they will not be making surplus honey, uh, and they're in danger of dying, we'll put sugar syrup on them and, and uh, keep them alive. Uh, Bees typically don't have a problem storing pollen or getting enough pollen. Pollen always comes out earlier than nectar anyway. So uh, pollen is their protein source and honey is their carbohydrate source. Together they are a complete meal for the honeybee. And uh, uh, like I said, pollen isn't hard for them to get. It's, it, you know, plants start pollinating much earlier than they start, than plants start flowering and and giving nectar. Um, so beekeepers do not ever, that I'm aware, I'm sure there's a few bad apples out there that uh, maybe they put sugar syrup on and you know have the bees add some enzymes to it, store it and sell it. I can't see them selling much of it because I don't imagine it would taste anything like decent honey. But uh, you know the fact of the matter is Honey does granulate. All honey, natural honey granulates, has nothing to do with uh, the beekeepers cheating and putting sugar syrup on. That's the first myth. Uh, the second is, is that I think a lot of people believe that uh, honey that they buy in the store, since it doesn't granulate for so long, is pure honey, and the stuff that does granulate, uh, like this, is not. The uh, fact of the matter is, is that there's a somewhat of a misleading phrase that is used in the beekeeping industry and then that filters on into the uh, consumers that filtered honey isn't real. Uh, what we need to define is what is filtered honey. Filtered honey is honey that has been processed through a high pressure filter, a small cylindrical filter, and they pressurize the honey, they heat the honey, usually to at least 160 degrees and then they then they send it through this filter at high pressure that filters out any particulates whatsoever including pollen 
and including any granules that are in the honey because the more granules that are in the honey uh, the faster it will granulate. It's kind of like a crystal growing. If you have a little starter crystal it grows faster than if there's there's nothing in there. So honey is the same way. Once there's a little bit of crystal in there it's going to granulate faster. So what uh, commercial producers of honey do here in America and most of the places in the world is they they heat the honey to they call it pasteurization. Pasteurization is also a misnomer in the, the beekeeping industry. Uh, honey doesn't need to be pasteurized. It's a natural antiviral, antibacterial um, substance. Honey doesn't need to be uh, uh, pasteurized like milk does. There are, there, there are no bacteria present in honey. They can't live in this environment, nor are there any viruses. There is a botulism spore that can survive in honey. In other words, it does not multiply, but it doesn't die either. It's a spore. And because of that, that's why warning labels suggest not giving honey to infants under a year old, uh, one year and younger. The reason is, is because they don't have an immune system. Their immune system comes from their mother and they can't fight off a botulism spore. And since botulism spores can survive in honey, then they don't thrive or anything in honey, but they can survive. Since that is the case, that's the recommendation is to not feed it to infants under a year, year old. Uh, so honey doesn't need to be pasteurized. It's in fact, it's used on band-aids now in hospitals for wound care. Uh, because of its antibacterial, antiviral properties. Uh, another thing is that when it's pressure filtered like that, and, and they use the word filtered, um, it, like, it takes out any traces of pollen, which is usually the way that they measure what kind of honey it is. They, they look at microscopic pollen, spore, pollen granules in the, in the honey, and they identify the honey by the pollen that's in there. Um, if there are no pollen granules in there, they say that it's uh, it's not honey. That's not that's not true at all. Uh, it's one way to tell. And if you get raw honey, you're going to have pollen granules in there. So the difference between commercially produced honey is that they pressure filter it and they pasteurize it. They heat it up, in other words, and get every trace of any granule or pollen out of there. And that way, on the shelf, it sits there for, for months or, in some cases, years without granulating because commercial honey producers don't want to sell honey to a store and have it granulate while it's sitting on the store shelf. So that's why they do that. Heating it more than 120 degrees does kill the enzymes that the bees add to nectar to make honey. It kills those enzymes. Uh, so it's, it doesn't have the health benefits that it would have had it not been heated. So, in my business and most beekeepers' businesses, they do not heat honey to over 120 degrees. That's why you don't put it in the microwave. That's one of the reasons, is because in the microwave, you can't control the temperature at any one spot, and you can kill those, those enzymes. Um, the best ways to heat honey are slow and at low temperatures, which I'm going to show you. What most beekeepers do do is they filter it, or, or a, a, a better term might be strain, since filtering is kind of a term used for that ultra high pressure filtering system. Uh, strain it. So I strain my honey through a nylon cloth uh, and I heat it to about 100 to 110 degrees so that it'll go through the cloth. If you don't heat it, it basically, it, it'll take forever to get through there. So. I strain it, but I do not ever heat it over 120 degrees. In fact, it's usually 10 to 15 degrees less than that. And as a result, my honey granulates pretty quick. So uh, those are some of the things I wanted to clear up about reliquifying honey or about honey in general. And now I'll go on to uh, the liquefying process.